leprechauns in pots of gold, green beer, shamrocks, and everything else that is supposedly connected to the luck of the Irish. That's what many people picture when you talk about Ireland, especially when it comes to St. Patrick's Day. But for these individuals, their luck had run out when they encountered someone who had other plans for them. Here are 10 unsolved murders from Ireland. Enjoy. James Mulqueen. At 92 years old, it was believed Limerick man James Mulqueen had died of natural causes when his body was discovered on Friday, October 23rd, 2009. The alarm had been raised when he failed to collect his pension from the post office in the small village of Arda. However, a story of sadness turned to suspicion when a post-mortem discovered Mr. Mulqueen had several broken bones. The investigation uncovered evidence that money was missing and there were signs of a disturbance at his cottage. However, there was no evidence of forced entry, so he may have known his attacker. Despite the post-mortem results, it was three years before Godaya upgraded their investigation to murder inquiry. In March of 2014, a man was arrested and questioned, but was released without charge, and the pensioner's murder remains unsolved. Sean Duffy The Gaeltacht village of Dunglo and Donegal is most famous for its summer music festival and accompanying pageant to crown Mary from Dunglo. However, that quaint life jars with the brutal murder of undertaker Sean Duffy on January 29th, 2005. Although generally affable, Duffy's own mother admitted he had many enemies. However, irrespective of who he had crossed, the punishment meted out the 36-year-old was excessive. After returning home from his mother's house 300 yards away in the early hours of the morning, it is believed Duffy was set upon by two men who had lain in wait for him. He was attacked with an axe, knife, and a crossbow, and received blows to the head with a blunt object. He was found the following morning by his brother, lying in a pool of blood with a crossbow bolt still embedded in his arm. After launching an appeal for information in early 2016, detectives interviewed a number of people later that year, but no one was ever charged with the murder. Grace Livingstone Mother of two Grace Livingstone was 57, lived in the Moorings, a middle-class estate in Malay, with her husband, James. On the morning of December 7th of 1992, Mr. Livingstone left for his job as a tax inspector in Dublin. He returned later that evening to find his wife's body in the bedroom. She had been bound and gagged with black tape before being shot once in the back of the head with her husband's shotgun there was no sign of forced access. Mr. Livingstone was arrested the following March for illegally held firearms, but was released after two days, and a second inquiry in 1994 concluded he could not have killed his wife. Two neighbors reported hearing unexplained bangs while he was still at work, while a fingerprint found on the tape didn't match Mr. Livingstone's. Mr. Livingstone, who was involved in two major tax evasion investigations at the time of his wife's death, including one dealing with smuggling, believes his wife's murder was linked to his work. In 2008, he settled his case against the state for wrongful arrest. However, the identity of his wife's killer remains a mystery. The Carey Babies on April 14th of 1984, the body of a newborn baby boy was found on White Strand Beach with 28 stab wounds and a broken neck. The boy was given the name John 
and baptized before being buried. Gardais suspected unmarried Joanne Haynes from Abidorni, near Trelay, 40 miles from Cahir Sivin. She had recently been pregnant, but was no longer so. Nor was there any sign of a baby. Hayes had originally said she buried her baby on her farm after it died shortly after birth. However, on May 1st, following lengthy interrogation, Hayes and her sister, two brothers, mother, and aunt signed statements confessing to involvement in the stabbing of a baby found on the beach before it was thrown into the sea. Hayes was charged with murder, but a day later the remains of Hayes' actual baby were found in a field on the family farm, corroborating her original story. Tests showed that the blood type of the baby on the farm was O, matching both Joanne and the baby's married father, Jeremiah Locke, while that of the beach baby was A. Still convinced that Hayes had killed the baby found on the beach, Gardai pursued a theory of heteropaternal superfecundation, claiming Joanne had sex with two men of different blood types within 24 hours and gave birth to twins, each with a different father. Ultimately, the murder charge against Hayes was dropped, but a tribunal in 1985 found she had killed her own baby on the farm, despite the state pathologist being unable to confirm a cause of death. The inquiry also exonerated Gardai over claims they coerced confessions from the Hayes family. The parents or killer of the baby found on the beach have never been found, but ominously, his grave has been repeatedly attacked over the years. Moss Moore. Moss Moore, a farmer from Raymore, left a neighbor's house on the evening of November 6, 1958. His own house was less than a mile away, but en route, he was strangled and beaten, while his body was left in a stream. Although it was ten days before the 46-year-old's body was found, the finger of suspicion immediately pointed to his neighbor, Dan Foley. The pair had fallen out after Foley erected a fence on a small strip of land between their properties. When Moore wasn't seen for two days, his friends contacted Gardai to report him murdered. Such was their conviction of Foley's guilt. Graffiti daubed on a local creamery called for a business to boycott Foley's farm produce. Signs were posted threatening him, and people refused to speak to him. A file was sent to the Director of Public Prosecutions, but there was insufficient evidence for a conviction. As he struggled to sell his produce, he was shunned by friends, and with the finger of suspicion constantly on him, Foley dropped dead four years after the murder. His nephew John, who maintains his uncle was innocent, believes the strain of being ostracized contributed to his uncle's death. The story was the inspiration for John B. Keane's play The Field, later made into a film starring Richard Harris. Renee Murray. On Friday, September 3, 1999, at 9 p.m., Renee Murray went with a friend to a pub in Dunlacar after work. At 11.20 p.m., having made plans to meet with her friend at a nightclub later that night, the 17-year-old left the pub and headed toward her home in Glenacary to change clothes and pick up some money. The walk should have taken Murray around 15 minutes. Just 500 yards from her home, Murray was stabbed 31 times. Her body was found just after 12.30 a.m. by her sister and friends. The murder weapon has never been found. Gardai continued to appeal for information and urge anyone protecting the killer to come forward. One theory is that Murray was attacked by a woman who had a grudge against her after female DNA found under her fingernail did not match any of her female friends. Eileen Costello O'Shaughnessy On November 30th, 1997, Galway taxi driver Eileen was coming to the end of her shift 
when she contacted the depot just after 8 p.m. to say she had a fare to Claire Galloway, 10 miles north of the city. It was the last time anyone heard from the 47-year-old. The following morning, her body was found on a country road known as Tinker's Lane. The mother of two had been beaten to death, and her skull shattered. Eileen's taxi was spotted abandoned on the outskirts of Galloway City around 9 p.m. the previous evening about an hour after she had last contacted her depot. When Gardai were called to the abandoned car around midnight, they discovered the car seat covered in blood. The meter gave a reading of 17 miles, roughly the distance from Galway to Tinker's Lane, and back again. Eileen's killer had presumably driven her blood-stained car back to Galway after dumping her body. In the weeks before and after the murder, Eileen's mother received anonymous silent phone calls, as well as a call following her daughter's death, during which a crying woman repeatedly said she was sorry. Desi Fox Bookmaker Desi Fox was traveling from his home for a race meeting on September 30th, 1990 when he was ambushed by an armed gang at Healy's Bridge in Prosperous, 15 miles from his destination. Their intention was robbery, as Fox was carrying 20,000 pounds with him for his job as an on-course bookie. Fox's Mercedes was forced to stop by two other vehicles, and during the robbery, he was shot in the thigh. Unfortunately, the bullet severed an artery, and Fox bled to death. Gardai arrested and questioned 17 people at the time and interviewed 1,500 people. In 2010, Fox's daughter Lorna helped launch a Garda appeal for the information about the death of the father of three, but his murderers have still to be brought to justice. Antoinette Smith On July 11, 1987, Antoinette Smith traveled from her home in Dublin to the neighboring county of Meath to see David Bowie. After the gig, the 27-year-old mother of two returned to Dublin, where she visited La Mirage nightclub in the city center. She left at 2.15 a.m. and was last seen on O'Connell Street 15 minutes later. Nine months later, Smith's body was discovered in a shell grave in the Dublin mountains. She had been raped and strangled while her head was reportedly covered with a plastic bag. Gardai revived the case in 2013. They want to speak with two men, then in their 20s, who got a taxi with a young woman matching Smith's description an hour after the last confirmed sighting. The trio claimed they were going to a house party and were dropped off at the foot of the Dublin mountains. Two men were also spotted coming down from the mountains around 5.30 a.m. and were conspicuous as they were not dressed for hill walking. Sophie Toscan Duplantier French film producer Sophie Toscan Duplantier fell in love with the rugged landscape of Ireland, but the country would be where she met her savage death. The 39-year-old mother of one flew into Cork on December 20th of 1996 for a brief stay at her holiday home outside Shell, planning to return to France for Christmas. However, on the morning of December 23rd, Sophie's body was discovered by a neighbor at the end of a pathway that led to her house. She had been beaten beyond recognition, her right cheek an eye socket, and her fingers were broken. Her lower lip was torn, and there was a boot mark on her neck. Journalist Ian Bailey was arrested twice, in 97 and 98, over the murder. Local shopkeeper Marie Farrell claimed she saw Bailey at a bridge near Sophie's home at 3 a.m. on the night of the murder, while 14-year-old Malachi Reed told Garday that Bailey confessed to the murder while giving him a lift. However, Bailey, 
who has maintained his innocence, claimed Reed misunderstood him while he was describing the allegations against him. And Farrell has since retracted her claims, saying she was coerced by Gardai. Bailey, who willingly provided DNA samples, claimed Gardai conspired to implicate him in the murder. Bailey successfully appealed against an extradition order after a French magistrate issued a European arrest warrant. In March of 2015, a high court jury dismissed Bailey's claims of conspiracy against the Gardai and the state. He appealed the decision with the Court of Appeal reserving judgment in March of 2017. It seems the luck of the Irish cannot save you when a sinister mind has other plans for you. So have a pint in their honor and count your blessings. And may luck be on your side. Happy St. Patrick's Day. See you next time. <laughs>